gets taken down in the play, no call made. Pops out to the blue line, picked up here by Giuliano. Giuliano gets flooded out of the play. Oh, and a backhanded shot and a score by number 11, Colin Ross. Working around the end board, down to flicking off the side that only gets part of the blue line. Fire back in! Right up the the play. Now again, another shot by Hogue as he fires one, letting off the ice. A big hit down in the corner there between Barrett and, and a score! Right off the hit! But there's no! CJ LaCour ties it! Saved by Carr, 24 seconds remaining in the main advantage, 5-10 remaining in the blue. Here's a shot and a score! Short-handed by Ali! Lynch sets back. Pass complete to Fernandez and he's going to pick up about six. Gets through two defenders. Coming out is White, and he is first to the ball. Hamish regains right at the top of the circle, and clicks off, and a goal! That pass play intercepted! And it's going to be taken all the way to the house! Hey! Switching sides. Good communication there to have Asadi hit that one. And finally a mistake. Here's a run up the middle, barreling hard and into the end zone. Touchdown goes. Spacey's going to cut back the other way to the five. Did he get in? Hoppy in motion. Right up the gut is Brooks, and he will find the end zone. Falcons. No, and another shot on goal. Way right over the top. Good evening and welcome to Cranston West High School Stadium, affectionately known as The Nest in Cranston, Rhode Island. It is another week of Rhode Island High School football on Fans Only Sports Network. Matt Jellis alongside Nick LeBlanc. Nick, good to see you. It's been a moment since softball season it, ended. It's been a while, yeah. It's been a hot minute. But here we are back in football season and it is week one in earnest this time around. Last week, of course, the injury fun games. We were here at The Nest for that game. The Cranston West Falcons in a battle of a game, losing 34-19 against the Coventry Oakers. Coventry obviously looking to be a very strong team in Division Two this year. Tonight, they have to take on a very good West Warwick Wizards who beat Tollgate 28 nothing last week. And we saw Tollgate a number of times last year, and we know how good that team is. Yeah, that team's very good. They're, they're really good on all three phases of the game. And that's something that I want to see the Falcons be really good tonight. You know, be effective on offense, be effective on defense, try to force some turnovers here. It's just really good, consistent play calling as well. You know, you don't get too fancy with it. Don't get too cute. You know, four or five yards here every play, and you'll hold the ball for a while. Let's look really quickly at the keys to the game tonight, and it's, of course, going to be all about scoring. 19 points for the Falcons last week, 28 for the Wizards. They're going to have to try to go a little one or two up if they want to get on the better side. Touchdowns, three for the Falcons, four, obviously, for uh, the Wizards. The better second half, the Wizards shut out Tolgeet. Cranston West kind of let that game get away from them. So I say the advantage, though, really could actually be a toss tonight. 
Yeah, yeah. I mean, look, it really just comes down to who can possess the football more, and that's something that the Falcons have to do this week. Scoring 19 points, not, not not a bad score, scoring 19 points, but you want to hold the ball a little bit more, score some points, and try to get some turnovers. Made some points off of turnovers as well, because points off turnovers, they go a long, long way. Let's take a look at players to feature on tonight's game. We're going to go with Cranston West first, and we're going to kick that one off, and it's going to be the senior Jacob Robert, the tackle, 6'3", 245, 245 pounds, a wide receiver and lacrosse player. As well, Sorry, my fault, wrestling and lacrosse player as well. One tackle, one block in the game against Coventry. One to watch there on the defensive side of the ball for the Falcons. Also, it's going to be on the offensive side of the ball, the running back, Marcus Chung. We saw him a lot last year. Speedy, if he gets into that A-gap and flies right through. Yeah, the, yeah, the A-gap is right up the middle. You know, If you can find the gap right up the middle, uh, A-gap or the C-gap, and, and you have open room, take it and just absolutely run with it. It's tough to get to the outside, especially with the B-daps and everything. So if you can bust through the A-gap, Find the CDAP 2 as a secondary option, you're going to be good running the football. And then, of course, the third player that we were going to feature tonight is Maddie, Maddie Alves, Madison Alves, the uh, senior kicker. She is actually out for the game tonight. She played a girls' soccer game last night against Barrington, took a hard knock in the second half, a little bit of bother to her knee, her kicking leg, of course. She has KT tape wrapped all around it, no brace, though, which is a fortunate thing for both the girls' soccer team and the football team. She will not be featuring in tonight's uh, game a freshman who made the Sports Center top 10 for her football kicking. Four sports star, plays soccer, plays basketball, plays football, also runs on the track and field team, has two goals already on the season for the girls' soccer team. Hopefully they're going to get her back before their next game, which comes up. But Maddie Alves not dressing tonight, not handling the kicking duties for the Falcons. We'll see how that works out. On the opposite side for the West Warwick Wizards, we're going to start that one off and it's going to be the running back, DeAndre Chase. And DeAndre Chase, 152 yards on the ground in the game the other night. If West Warwick can dominate and establish the run, they're going to have to do it through DeAndre Chase. Uh, he's, a big, he's a big man to take down. And uh, he did get 152 yards by accident. That's just pure muscle going up the line and just forcing guys, pushing guys back, trying to force them to tackle you at the legs. He has a lot of upper body strength. And, and, he's, and, if, he's, and if he's able to push the pile, just back, it's going to be a long night for the Falcons' defense. Going on through to our next player on the West Warwick Wizards, and that's the junior quarterback, Brady Mail. He was a Division II player to watch by the Providence Journal this year. Of course, Rhode Island Max Prep 12th rated quarterback, and that's really important to be that number 12 quarterback. That puts you right there in a very recruitable position. Yeah, if you're top 15 in what what is it the state of the entire state of Rhode Island? Yeah, you're you're going to be getting looked at. So this is this is a big this is a big year for him to really help tr try to develop some scholarships. He still has another year left in high school. He still has plenty of time. But being in the top 15 though, and you're a junior, you got a bright future right right there. And our last player to feature is of course. On the offensive side as well for the West Warwick Wizards, and that's Richard Medeiros, the senior wide receiver, and he's another one of those top players, a triple threat player as a cornerback and strong safety. Yeah, yeah I, mean, I mean, he tries to catch the ball on offense, then he's trying to defend the ball and catch it, <laughs> take it the other way on defense. Now, three tool players is exactly what you want, and the fact is they got to try to contain him not only on defense, but on offense too, because if you let him get open, Again, you're in for a long, long night. So that's what we've got for you from the Cranston West Falcons Stadium. It's the Cranston West Falcons and the West Warwick Wizards right here on Fans Only Sports Network. We're going to take a quick break and be right back. We'll see you soon.
you. We will now turn it over to the national anthem and that Falcon Band. So the national anthem from the Cranston West Falcons band in a moment of silence held before the national anthem as we recognize 20 years to the day tomorrow from September 11, 2001 and the attacks on the World Trade Center towers, the Pentagon and Flight 93 that crashed into the field in Shanksville, PA. As we welcome you back again to Cranston West High School Stadium, Matt Jellis alongside Nick LeBlanc. The Crimson West Falcons and the West Warwick Wizards, and we'll see how this game matches up tonight. And it's a nice 66 degrees outside with a little heat index making it feel like 72 and northwest wind of 12 miles an hour. A lot better than what the uh, game was last night for girls soccer in the <laughs> driving rainstorm that happened and uh, made for a slippery ball and we're not gonna have to not gonna have to deal with that tonight obviously as it's uh yeah dealing with the wet football is the most difficult thing dealing with the wet football and a wet baseball in sports uh, it's extremely difficult yeah, especially the football it's a lot a lot bigger you gotta grip it the right way to throw it captains are at the center of the field going through all of the particulars with the official as our president and CEO Ron Robert has joined us up in the booth <laughs> yeah good to see good to see him always <laughs> Snuck up behind me. <laughs> he does that. He does it every game. I feel like he just like yep. I was like oh, okay, way to go. Yeah, yeah. Turn around, boom. Hello. <laughs> Sneak attacks from uh, from the man, from the boss man. So, Falcons are going to the left hand side now, and it's going to be. A defer by West Warwick. So we're going to now also. Oh, I thought they were going to flip sides of the field. They're just going to shake hands, but West Warwick is deferred. So Falcons. Will head on offense to begin. 
Well, set the tempo early on offense, establish your game plan, establish the run early on, but but don't be afraid to try to pass the ball either through the air. One thing that one thing that we saw last year in, our, in uh, the one game I did with you with uh, Cranston West is that they did a lot of wildcat last year with the Stenson. So you, you don't want to get too complacent in the wildcat. You want to keep going on. You want to have a nice, good mix of run and pass. And tonight's game is brought to you by PAG Projects for landscaping and snow removal. Contact 401-489-489. 2745 by Manny Sports on Menden Road in Cumberland, Rhode Island. Now reopen. Check Manny Sports Rhode Island for more information. By second time around sports in Cranston, Rhode Island. And by J.O. Plumbing for more information. Check out joplumbingri.com. And by RR Elite Recruits. If you're looking to play at the next level, college recruiting is something that they can help you with. Check out www.rreliterecruits.com. Falcons to receive the kickoff. It is up and away. Caught back at about the 25-yard line, wheeling and dealing and getting up to the 40 before he's taken down. And a good run from number 13, Hudson Carvalho. A good way to start a start short short little field here on offense. Ball right at the forty, and uh, now now Doc Tablives in the excellent field position. And we apologize for the clock error. We're going to work on getting that fixed as a handoff goes up the gut there. And that is the aforementioned Chung picking up about three or four on the play. And that's what you want on offense. No, just small, low runs, nothing too big, nothing too fancy. Just good three, three, four yards here and there. It'll get you, it'll get you going. It's going to set them up for about a second and six. Chung again. He's going to get through for about a yard on the play. It's going to set up a third and five from the 45, and Chung already two carries, picking up five yards right away. Yeah, now here on third down, you, you know, it's not, a bad, it's not a bad time to go through the air here. No, you don't want to throw a 15-yard dime down the, down the sideline. Just a good little two-yard slant route up the middle. It just picked up the first down. That's the important thing. Just get it past the 50-yard line. Chung goes right through the middle again. This is going to be good for a first down as he's going to get to the 45 on the opposite side. Pickup of 10 on the play. And as we talked about in pregame, Chung, he was just able to bust right through the A gap, take it right up the middle, and just shove it down the throats of uh, the, the Wizards defense. So the Falcons establishing the run right away. And a good pickup here. Marcus Chung for about 20 yards already on the ground. They're going to go back again, and Chung got a little fake there, and it's actually, or looks like number 20, Dimitri LeBlanc in the middle there. He oh, pushed for two. Oh, little gangster play. <laughs> well, well, that's a little bit of trickery. You know, that, that's not a bad thing to do here, but you you got you got to be aware of it. Don't do it all the time. 9.50 left to go here in the first quarter. And thank you for tuning in on Fans Only Sports Network. Snap, a little trip back play. And LeBlanc goes down about two yards shy of the first down marker. He's going to set up a third and about two. And Dimitri LeBlanc, the 5'5", 155-pound junior running back splitting that backfield time with Marcus Chung and both LeBlanc and Chung have been able to work well so far in this first quarter. I like what the Falcons are doing. They're running it up the middle but also to the outside too as well. As I said in pregame, it's hard to bust through that B dap to the outside but you'll want to switch it up. You don't want to keep going to the A dap and C daps constantly. Play action gets bottled up right at the line of scrimmage. This time gets dropped down for a loss on the play. 
And this is going to set them back. They're going to actually just call it right at the line of scrimmage, so they lose nothing on the play, and it's going to set fourth and five. Yeah, that, that play blew up right at the line. I mean, I mean, good for the Falcons to try to do a little bit of play action, but the protection just did not hold up from the word go. And we'll see what the Falcons elect to do here. They're going to go for it here on the first fourth down of the game. DeFusco rolls all the way back. He's going to get lost, and he's going to be sacked all the way back. On the opposite side of the 50 at the 45, huge loss on the play and a loss of downs. Yeah, it looks like, yeah, like Jaden Pruden, he got in there right away. Shades down the quarterback for a big loss, and now the Wizards set up perfectly on, on offense. So a first down for the Wizards. That's the first first down of the game for them. Already in Falcon territory at the 48. Griffin for about a two yard run up the middle. Fountain defense very stunned on that play. Pulled up all the gaps up the middle. It was, it was only preventing him to get a two yard gain. Set in an eight. Run of the play here and tackled down right away back at the original line of scrimmage. So the Falcons defense is coming out hard here to hold up and Noah Ciceron on the tackle there. Flag on the play and we'll see what happens here. It's the first penalty of the game. Well, he was trying to go down to the ground to protect himself. And maybe a late hit, possibly. Oh, oh, there you go. And the Falcons coaching staff having a bit of a conversation with the referees, but it's going to be holding on the Wizards. And so that's going to set them back five yards, and it's going to set them up at the 40-yard line. And, and that's a drive killer right there. You know, pe penalties kill drives. I mean, we, we, we saw last night on Thursday Night Football in the NFL, you know, just drives, just holding penalties really kill drives. Dropping back, that one tips off, intercepted. It's LeBlanc. LeBlanc is headed all the way. If he can make it through about two more tackles, he's gonna get tripped up shoestring at the five. Dimitri LeBlanc picks off number 12, Brady Mile, and takes it to the five. Mile he was lo is looking for his tight end there or, or, or the slot receiver on there, but LeBlanc, he read his eyes perfectly, jumps up, Picks it off, nearly took it to the house, but good little deeds to dice, but great read on the ball by LeBlanc there to pick it off. Nearly took it to the house. And the Falcons are clearly set in the best position field-wise they've had all game from the six-yard line. And I cannot confirm or deny that I am related to the young man. <laughs> I didn't even think about that until he actually said it. That's insane. I cannot confirm nor deny. This one is going to get bunched up in the middle, and Marcus Chung is going to be able to go nowhere and finally flings the ball out as he was getting pushed around. And they're going to call no gain on the play, so it's going to be second and goal from the six. Some of the Wizards linebackers there, they plugged up all the dabs, especially the C gap, right where Chung was going, and they're able to just bottom up for no gain. That's what you got to do on defense, not only for the Wizards, but for the Fountains. Plug up the gaps. Don't give the running backs any room to run up the middle. Force them to the outside. We apologize for the clock error. We're working on getting that fixed. There's five and a half left to go here in the first quarter. Chung through the middle to the one. It's going to be third and goal. It'll be third and goal. Chung's looking for the A gap there. That was plugged up. He went to the C gap to his right. 
excellent read there by Chong. Love the read by both by both running backs today so far. Marcus Chung and Dimitri Lobakovin splitting the duties in the backfield, and both of them have had good positive yardage throughout this first quarter. Second offensive drive of the game for the Falcons. Snap here. Dubusko back gets bottled up again at the one is LeBlanc. And the fourth and goal. And now you have to start to wonder, do you just go for positive points? I mean, you're at the one yard line. You're right at the doorstep. LeBlanc, he tried to cut. He tried to bounce it to the outside. By the time he made that decision, it was too late. He was already wrapped up. In this spot, you go for it early on to... Remember, remember, you're without your kicker for tonight, so you want to go for points. Uh, get points early on to touch the Wizards. Once they get going offensively, they may not let you get back in the game. Bottled up and stopped for a loss in the backfield is LeBlanc. It's another turnover on downs for the Falcons as he is stopped and loss of three on the play, and it's going to set first and ten for the Wizards from the five-yard line, and the defense is going to have to figure out Brady Meal once again. Well, well, good, good look by the Wizards there. What they did is that they blitzed up the middle, plugged up both the A and C gaps, gave LeBlanc absolutely nowhere to run, bottom up for a two-yard loss and turnover on downs. I'm so sorry if I'm here, right? no, I'm, I'm good. <laughs> Second offensive possession of the evening for the Wizards now in a long field to work with from the five-yard line. Play action fake there rolls through the middle taken down for a gain of about three on the play is number 33 and that's Sean Schultz. Schultz is just trying to find some room to run out there. He couldn't bounce it to the outside because no, the outside was not available to him. Try to, pl try to plow through the C-gap even though that was contested with a bunch of Falcon defenders. And quite surprising that we have seen that I-formation backfield for the West Warwick Wizards and no DeAndre Chase yet. Stopped at the line, wow. Such stunt defense early on by both teams. So sets them right for a block at the line of scrimmage. And the Falcons trying to power their way to a hold here with two and a half left to go in the first third and six. Great, great defense we're seeing early on. I'd like to see a little bit of offense at some point, but both defenses not bending at all. That one gets about two on the play. And it's going to set fourth and four for the Wizards. It's going to be, it, it looks like the Wizards are going to be punting here, or it, they're going to be punting. It's going to be a, an extremely short punt, which will equal a short field for the Falcons. It's going to go from about midway of the end zone. Goes straight up, mile high pop. This one's going to come down at the... 30 take a roll to the 40 and out of bounds and the Falcons are going to get first and 10 at the 40 with a minute 25 left to go in the quarter that that was that was just a measly pop-up it, 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 it looked like he, he got off the side of his foot not right off the toes like they wanted to or right off the toes not off the side of the foot like which Good for the pump, but Fountain set up an excellent field position for the third time in this game, and now can they capitalize on it? Third offensive possession of the night for the Falcons. They're going to start first and 10 from the 40 yard line. DeFusco takes a snap, got bottled up right in the backfield, and sacked. It was Dimitri LeBlanc, and that is DeAndre Chase, the aforementioned running back on the defensive side playing at defensive end wearing number two uh, chase he read leblanc's uh legs knew exactly where he was going to 
Put him out. LeBlanc tried to escape him with the angel, but could not hold it. Second and nine on the play for the Falcons. Pitchback play. Gets to LeBlanc. LeBlanc dances around. He's going to get bottled up at the 40 and taken down. Football comes out after the whistle, so no fumble, of course, there. But it's going to be third down and 11 after a loss of one on the play. Well, one thing I wanted to see LeBlanc do differently, can't, or that he can do differently going forward in the game, Instead of trying to force your way up the middle to stick with it, just keep trying to bounce to the outside. The sideline is your friend. The sideline is your friend. And unless they get one off here very quickly, as DeFusco takes a look at the clock, I think that's going to take us to the end of the quarter as the horn is going to sound. And it will take us to the end of the first quarter. So we've reached the end of one. No score between the Falcons and the Wizards. We're going to take a quick break. We'll be right back. You're watching Rhode Island High School Football on Fans Only Sports Network. Cut back the other way to the five. Did he get in? Lynch sets back. Powers through. First down and then some. He's going to go all the way down 20. So third and 11 here for the Falcons as we get underway in the second quarter. We apologize for the clock error um, as everybody up in the booth has tried to take a look at this. And we do not understand what in the world happened with our clock. It looks from all intent and purpose like it should actually be working completely correctly. And for some reason, it's not broadcasting across on the screen. So we apologize for that. We'll see if we can get it fixed during the halftime break if we can take a deeper look at it. Yeah, has the hour sign on it. Like the, it's not supposed, we're not supposed to have the hour sign. Yeah, I completely lost the quarter. Even I like I don't even know what. That's a <laughs> weird situation there. Not not entirely yeah, entirely yeah. sure what happened. Yeah, maybe our store had a couple of uh, <laughs> a couple of cold ones before the game. <laughs> it's Friday night football in, in Rhode Island. <laughs> no score here between the Falcons and the Wizards. Fourth and seven, and a timeout called by the Falcons with fourth and seven. Well, well this is going to be an interesting play call here. You're inside enemy territory, but you haven't moved the ball much at all. So if you can try to move that football, draw up something that will fool the defense, maybe a little pass play, maybe a little trickery, it, it'll be enough to try to keep the Wizards off balance. We got a quarter number back. That's a good sign. Second quarter here. 11 11 to go. Make a wish, everyone. We're getting a little bit closer here, apparently. We got our quarter. <laughs> Uh, it's 11-11, make a wish. We got our quarter sign back, and we've got the clock looking right, so we're, we're getting closer to figuring <laughs> figuring out this bug. 11-11 left to go here in the first long pass play by DeFusco, going up for it and oh. coming down, and it's just broken up on the play by Richard Medeiros, and we talked about Medeiros in the pregame, how good he is on both sides of the ball, and you just saw it there on the defensive side. Medeiros nearly had the pick, but he was able to bat it down, turn over on downs once again. So three empty possessions for for the Falcons after excellent field position, 
Or Medeiros, he probably should have came down that interception, and he nearly missed it. Tonight's game is brought to you by J.O. Plumbing, Perceptic, Dream Cleaning, and Sewer, where there is pride and integrity in workmanship. Contact J.O. Plumbing, 401-996-9440. By Manny Sports in Cumberland, Rhode Island, 1725 Menden Road in Cumberland, Rhode Island. Open Wednesday through Saturday. Check mannysports.com for more information. By RR Elite, the nation's number one recruiting service for high school athletes looking to play in college with contact to 3,000 schools and over 60,000 coaches and 38 NCAA sports. Contact www.rreliterecruits.com. And by second time around sports in Cranston, Rhode Island, second time around sports is located at 453 Atwood Avenue. For more information, check out secondtimearoundsports.com as they play here for the Wizards. Flags fly all over the backfield. It's coming back. As that one is bottled up at the 40-yard line and the flags flying from the backfield usually signify a holding it, of some sort. It, it has to signify holding on the offense. That's an injury timeout, too. 10.49. 10.49 left to go. An injured player down on the field. We'll see what the flag is after that is taken care of. We're going to take a quick commercial break. We'll be right back. You're watching Rhode Island High School Football on Fans Only Sports Network. 10 to the races. Touchdown. And boys back out in front. A shot and a score. Into the zone. Right on the post side. Oh, they got it! The way the opportunity comes back in center of the ice, open goal and a score! You know, when they, if they can get the ball into that, when King goes around the horn herself, there's gonna be a shot! Coming out is White. The Falcons nil, and another shot on goal! We are back from the injury timeout and of course also waiting to see what the flag was and it is holding. That's the call and it's going to back the Wizards up and will be should be third down. Should be a repeat of first down. Or a repeat of the first down. Yeah, it should be first and 20. Uh, first and 20. Pass, snap back there, handed off to Chase. Chase gets about two on the play and it's gonna set second down and very long. Be about second and 18. Uh, DeAndre Chase, the running back there, wearing number two. It's about two on the play after the handoff from Brady Meal. Uh, uh, we got the clock working now. It's way off. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get there. We, we apologize on that one. We'll, we'll get there. <laughs> we, <laughs> at least it's working. <laughs> at least they got it fixed in the truck. So, <laughs> <laughs> Great job to our, our technical team. Working this one out, long pass play. That's going to go over the outstretched hands of Richard Medeiros. And I think the uh, Wizards fans might have wanted a little bit of a P.I. call there, but nothing there as that ball was sailing well into the Cranston West Falcons I, bench. I, I, I don't think there's enough to really call a defensive P.I. there. It, it was an untouchable ball, first off. So you're, you're not going to call defensive P.I. on a ball that's not even going to be remotely close to catching it. Nine thirty-three to go. About a minute. So about off. a minute off. <laughs> now we got. <laughs> now we got ourselves to like a minute off. <laughs> They're working that clock hard. Big play blown up in the backfield and down goes Mail and a huge sack on the play from the Falcons defense. I think Chase missed a block right there because the defensive end he just walked right on in 
and Milo Dent's absolutely thrown to the ground. I think Chase missed a block. Fourth and a mile now from the 20 yard line. Fourth and 19. And Miles trying to throw this a mile long. Or we're going to see punt formation out of the Wizards defense. I think they're all mixed up. I'm not even sure. They know exactly where they're going. They are going to punt. They were missing one down lineman. That's what was <laughs> That'd going be on. Helpful. <laughs> High snap comes down. Kick is up. This uh, one is going to again take a bounce that will be caught and then hauled down at the 45. So the Falcons start exactly where they did on the last War Wizards punt. This is now going to be three of their first four drives starting in Falcon, and my apologies, Wizard territory, and they have nothing to show for it right now. We'll, we'll see if they can do something on this drive as well. They have had a very good run game established on the ground between both Dimitri LeBlanc moving around a lot and then also from Marcus Chung we're going to see what they can pull off here. They're moving the football great. They just can't punch it in. As we are 8.27 left to go here in the off. second quarter. Play in the flat, passed off. He holds up. Somehow he was able to stay up, going all the way down, still churning to the 32-yard line as Dimitri LeBlanc. How in the world did he hold himself up? Oh, LeBlanc, he did the classic put my fist down and just pray that my knees don't hit the ground. He did that beautifully, kept his feet moving, and picked up a massive amount of yards. And yeah, Dimitri LeBlanc may have just made play of the first half, but maybe a play of the week right there. That was yards after catch in plentiful amount. He was going to tackle to the backfield. Here's another pass play in the flat from DeFusco again. This is on the outside to Chung. Chung goes for the end of round and he gets pushed out of bounds at about the 10 yard line. Marcus Chung this time. Hit, you hit him with the run early, then you start to switch it up and go to the little screen passes to both LeBlanc and Chung. Chung picks up a good chunk of yardage right there, sets him up beautifully inside the 25. It's going to be first and 10 from the 21 for the Falcons, and they are in striking distance once again on their fourth offensive series of the game. And we're caught up in time finally. <laughs> This one goes flat to Chung. Again, right through Chung to the five-yard line. We'll see where his knees actually came down. We'll be spotted at the six. But Marcus Chung and Dimitri LeBlanc have opened up the aerial attack with these little check-down bubble screen passes coming out of the hands of Matt DeFusco. DeFusco, uh, great drive. Three for three on this drive. And each one's been positive yardage. And LeBlanc and Chung, they're really giving it to that Wizard defense. A second and goal here for the Falcons from the six-yard line. Furthest that they've gotten down on both sides of the field was the six. DeFusco. Pass. Hand it off. Goes right up the middle. Gut play and a touchdown. Lower the shoulder. He, get, he blows the line back and punches it in for the touchdown to Dave Christ in the lead. The senior fullback, Teddy Shackelford, hits the house for six. And the Falcons are first on the board tonight. Six nothing with 6.35 left to go here in the first in the second half. Well, second quarter, <laughs> first half. Okay, all of that. <laughs> So I forgot to have the third cup of toffee today. <laughs> I did not. Kick is up and it is good. And the Falcons will take a 7 nothing lead. And I did not get my Duncan before the game today. And it's, that, that was my moment right there to show why. Dunkin' Donuts, if you're listening, you might want to sponsor us. I don't know. <laughs> Help uh, us out. <laughs> anyway, beautiful orchestrated drive right there by the Falcons. They tripped him up with the, with the passes, the screen passes, especially to both LeBlanc and Chung. They took, they did the rest of the way, and then the quarterback just plows his way up the middle for the score. A gritty gut punch right there by the Falcons. The defense has been solid today so far against the Wizards. 
Now they got to team it up in the Fountain offense. They do, that's the momentum to not only feed off of themselves, but really give it to their defense as well. To, it, to, who knows, that is sending turnover. Tonight's scheme is brought to you by J.O. Plumbing, Septic, Dream Cleaning, and Sewer, where there is pride and integrity in workmanship. For more information, contact J.O. Plumbing, 401-996-9440. By Manny Sports in Cumberland, Rhode Island, 1725 Menden Road in Cumberland, Rhode Island, open Wednesday through Saturday. Check out mannysports.com for more information. Kickoff here, taken and run back for a moment to the 39 yard line is number 21, Lewis Rossi. Well, we'll see what the Wizards can do on offense after really a statement drive by the Fountains. Now, the Wizard offense, they need to respond to the statement drive themselves. They just got gut punched on defense. First and 10 coming up here for the Wizards. 621 left to go in the half. And thank you for tuning in this evening. Oh, ball dropped there, and Rossi has to be quick to get it on the turf. We thank you for tuning in this evening on Fans Only Sports Network, your home for Cranston West High School football home games throughout the 2021 season. And for all Rhode Island high school sports action around the state, check out www.fansonlysportsprtz.com for more information and in about 16 days time college sports on fans only sports network for the first time as we head to providence college and the providence college women's ice hockey club team at schneider arena with their very first game against assumption and then october 8th will be at boss ice arena university of rhode island men's ice hockey team as they take on I forgot who they're playing to start the season. Wow. <laughs> I'll get that one. Uh, so, so a good little bounce back run there by the running back. Because I think on the previous play, Rossi, I think he got a little confused by the 4-3 setup by the Fountains. They go right back to that 4-3 setup again. But they they only blitz two this time. And they're able to stop it for a minimal gain. Third and four for the Wizards here. And a timeout called. And with 4.55 left to go. We're well behind in time now. We're five seconds ahead. <laughs> Clocks are a fickle being, and <laughs> trying to control them in sports, I give all the props in the world to our uh, production team that does an absolutely amazing job in keeping the scoreboard and everything straight because I know for sure <laughs> I lose track of it so many times tricky for me I sometimes lose track of what time it is in the middle of the game itself I, I, I lose track of time in the middle of the day let alone a broadcast University of Rhode Island men's ice hockey October 8th is against the University of Pittsburgh Ooh. To start the season, a two-game set on the 8th and 9th will be there from Boss Ice Arena. That, that's a long ride for Pittsburgh right there. That's Welcome to college sports. That's a long ride. Third and four. Mail has to dump it off quickly, goes to Chase. Chase is going to get bottled up in the backfield and taken down as he was scrambling to try to get to the first down marker. He's going to fall a yard shy. It's going to be fourth and one. Good, good job there, my mile to just throw it away it was a dangerous throw but chase was right there he tried to extend it out for the first down just came about a yard short but you got positive yards out of that sets you up perfectly on fourth and one and good job by the wizards they're going for it right here important play for the wizards right here oh, because they have been unable to convert they're punting they are gonna punt what on fourth and one and you're wow. down by seven with and, and the punt goes nowhere. It bounces at the 40 and goes oh, out of bounds. Oh <laughs> that, that is gift wrapping field position for the Falcons. That, that's gift wrapped. 
gift wrapped with a bow on it. <laughs> yeah, it's like, here, take possession of the 40. Wow. The Founders have had good field position. All, they've worked with the short field all night. Ball will be marked at the 39-yard line officially. It's going to be first and 10 for the Falcons with 4.03 left to go here in the first half. That, that was just like, here, take the field position. Wow. I must say I call football, but I am not a football player. I don't understand that one from a strategic I, point. I, as a former high school, I, I do not understand that. Strategic. Snap here, handed off, and around Shackleford tries to get there, and he gets about eight on the play. It's going to leave a second and two for the Falcons as he is tackled out of bounds. And I'm, and I'm glad what I saw right there. that you took it to the outside. He knows that, okay, the middle's not working. Let me bounce it out to the outside. Eight yards there, the sidelines in front, the outsides in front. Well, when I was in high school, we ran the uh, Delaware wing T offense. It was, it was still very rare at the time. It ran in 95% of our playbook were all run plays. <laughs> but but it, it worked for us. We won two Super Bowls my uh, first two years of high school. Well, there you go. Got back to it in my junior year, but it fell short. Man in motion. DeFusco takes the snap here, goes to Shackleford again. Shackleford barrels through. He is right at the line. Uh, he, he got it. I did, even though even though we're calling for the monitor, I think he got it. I think he got it. They're going to spot that a yard oh, shy. No, he, he was right on it. He was right. Oh, no. No, he was right on the no The football is halfway past the marker. Come on. You can hear the consternation oh. out of the red storm. The Cranston West fan base below us as they are letting it be known to the officials, but oh, that, that's, that's going to set up a third and one and then offsides there, not called, and they get bottled up in the backfield, get back to the line of scrimmage, and it's going to be fourth and one. Oh, terrible. T t t oh, boy. Oh. Such a promising drive for the Falcons, derailed by a missed spot of the ball and now a non-penalty call. It, it, it was it clearly turned right outside. It should be a first down for the Falcons, not fourth and one. Yeah, the uh, the outside linebacker there, his helmet was over top yeah. of the Cranston I mean, offensive lineman. I mean, I'm not being biased here, right? I just no. I, I mean, calling oh, it exactly the way it is. Yeah. If Cranston had jumped, I call it, that the, the exact same the, way. The helmet went over the line. So here we go, fourth and one, two twenty six left to go here in the first half. Punch, punch, quarterback sneak. Can he push all the way through? He, he has it, and then some DeFusco gets shoved through to the 48 on the opposite side, and it's going to be first and 10 Falcons. Well, well, he got help from his, big, from his big boys up front. They were able to push him past the line of scrimmage, able to try to push him more so that we could push the pile. Defense right on top of it, but the Falcons do end up getting the first down. A lot later than I would have liked to see it. That's the Matt Liner, Reggie Bush, USC, <laughs> you know, bunch punch during Notre Dame, the Notre Dame game. Just kind of shove everybody. Just, just get out of my way. Inside of the final two minutes to go here in the first quarter, snap to DeFusco. DeFusco drops back, throws this one long. It's going to go over top to Marcus Chung. Touchdown, Marcus Chung, and the Falcons have put another six on the board. Oh, Marcus Chung. He beat both Branch and Gormley absolutely clean. He was, he was left wide open. Beautiful ball there. Right into the breadbasket. And he takes it to the house. 13 quick points by the Fountain offense. Well, this is a change of fortunes from the way the game went last week for the Falcons. They are looking like we thought they were going to look this season. There's a guy up front to miss his home in the touchdown. Kick is up, kick is good. No good. Wow. It went. It lo look, look good, look good from our angle. Yeah, I'm gonna have to go back and watch that one, but with one and a half left to go here in the first half, the Falcons a commanding 13 nothing lead over the Wizards. Yeah, Chung, he just beat both Branch and Gormley. Absolute, he, they lost him. They lost him in great, 
And just a fantastic throw there by uh, by, Def by Defuso. Beautiful, beautifully ball right in the breadbasket and Chung right to the house. And you want to talk about that tie up there with Defusco and Chung is the bigger fact for the Falcons, they are both juniors. So we have seen a lot of Defusco and Chung. Of course, Chung, it's Defusco on the play action, handing off to Chung, Chung busting through those A and B gaps. Then here's the pass play, the, the check down flat on the first drive for the touchdown. Now they have the loop play that they get here and that's a, they're gonna want them back next year, big time. Here's Chase all the way up, almost to midfield. He's gonna come down at the 47 yard line. DeAndre Chase, a big run back there with a minute 15 left to go. Yeah, yeah, Chase, he, he had to play that on the hop. It was a very short kick too. Chase, he had to play it on the hop, it, but a great return though. That's what you wanted. Set up your offense in excellent field position exactly what he did now the Wizards get to work with a bit of a short field and see if they can try to get back into this because the Falcons just smacked you in the mouth with 13 unanswered points they're on, still they're on still back -to -back on possessions right and they're still on their side of the 50 so we'll see how this one holds up haven't gotten across midfield yet first and 10 male taking all the time he possibly can Finally gets the snap, empty backfield, goes screen pass out to Chase. Chase is going to get bottled up in the backfield. He's going to fight through and ends up coming down on a four-yard loss on the play. The Falcons defense gang tackling DeAndre Chase. Chase, he just see the pressure coming. So, so come on, he just, he saw the pressure, dumped out to Chase for a nice, good, safe throw. But Chase, he just had nowhere to run. He tried to power his way through, but he just had nowhere to go. Big loss, big loss there, and not what you want if you're the Wizards. Near the 50-yard line, you're all backwards. You're already it, down 13. And it keeps the clock running, so you're going to have to see here how this goes. With 37 seconds left, they're going to be able to get one, maybe two plays off. I mean, they get the ball to begin the half. They do have the ball to begin the half. One play. He's going to go all the way down, mail over the head Bad of throw. everyone. Uh, Midieros in the area there. That, that that was thrown into triple coverage. He, yeah, he had two guys there, but it's still triple coverage. Your chances of complete that to your own teammate is le is less than thirty five percent, essentially. Twenty two seconds, twenty one and change left on the clock here, and third and very long for the Wizards, and this probably will be our final play of the half. Male split formation in the backfield. Takes a snap, a little play action, goes to the sideline here into coverage again. That one's gonna go over top and comes down. That was a double coverage this time. So triple coverage the first time, double coverage the second time, and it's fourth and 14. Uh, and they're going to send out the punting unit again. I don't think Miles is reading, reading the field at all. He, he's just trying to shut it up there, pray for something. And he's not, he's not looking at the way how the defense is set up. He's not looking at the coverage. It, it, if, if, if no one's open, just try to throw it away. You've already been picked off once tonight. Tonight's game is brought to you by J.O. Plumbing Sewers. Septic and drain cleaning by PAG Projects for landscaping and snow removal needs by Second Time Around Sports in Cranston, Rhode Island. By Manny's Sports in Cumberland, Rhode Island, now open again on Menden Road. And by RR Elite Recruits. For more information on how you can be seen at the next level, be seen www.rreliterecruits.com. Tell you one thing, Chung should be looked at for the next level. He can play this game. Oh, <laughs> absolutely, without question. Marcus Chung, definitely, if he hasn't already been looked at, he should be getting looked at. Snap goes high again. Mile high pooch punt again. This one's going to come down to the 40. It's going to take a wizard's roll this time, and it's going to go out of bounds around about the 24-yard line, so a... 
10-yard punt that tucks a, takes about another 15-yard roll, but the clock goes out to zeros, and we'll see what they say. I think I think they made I think they might make the Falcons snap it once. No, nope. they're just gonna call it. They're gonna call yeah, the half. Good, good, good idea there. So that is halftime with the Cranston West Falcons leading the West Warwick Wizards thirteen nothing. We're gonna take a break. We'll be right back. You're watching Rhode Island High School football on Fans Only Sports Network. <laughs> Lynch sets back. Pass complete to Fernandez, and he's going to pick up about six. Gets through two defenders. Coming out is White, and he is first to the ball. Hamish regains right at the top of the circle, and clicks off and a goal. That pass play intercepted. And it's going to be taken all the way to the house. Hey. Switching sides. Communication that about Asadi hit that one. Finally a mistake. There's a run up the middle, barreling hard and into the end zone. Touchdown goes. Spacey's going to cut back the other way to the five. Can he get in? Copy in motion. Right up the gut is Brooks, and he will find the end zone. Falcons. No, and another sound goal.
Hunt back the other way to the five. Did he get in? Lynch sets back. Powers through. First down and then some. He's going to go all the way down. 20. 10 to the races. Touchdown. And board back out in front. A shot and a score. Into the zone. Right on the post side. Oh, they got it! The way the opportunity comes back in center of the ice, open goal and a score. You know when they if they can get the ball into that, when King goes around the horn herself, there's gonna be a shot. Coming out is White. The Falcons no, and another shot on goal. Sets back. Powers through. First down and then some. He's going to go all the way down. 20. 10 to the races. Touchdown. And board back out in front. A shot and a score. Into the zone. Right on the post side. Yeah. Oh, they've got it. The way the opportunity comes back in center of the ice. Open goal and a score. You know, when they, if they can get the ball into that. When King goes around the horn herself. There's going to be a shot. Coming out is White. The Falcons nil. And another shot on goal. Hunt back the other way to the five. Did he get in? Lynch sets back. Powers through. First down and then some. He's going to go all the way down. 20. 10 to the races. Touch. Welcome back inside the broadcast booth halftime show here between the Cranston West Falcons and the West Warwick Wizards. Cranston West leading 13-0 over the West Warwick Wizards, and it's been the ground game of Marcus Chung, and it's been also Dimitri LeBlanc as well. Yeah, Chung, LeBlanc, they're racking up the yards both on offense, and really, that's been the Talos' Fountain offense all night long. They've been, they've been able to move the pile multiple times, set up a lot of first downs, and plus, to the Falcons' advantage, they've had a lot of great field position too, which has set up both Chung and LeBlanc up beautifully. Yeah, I was going to mention that one thing is also ball possession, two has been field position, and the field position has really been the punting game woes for West Warwick. Yeah, West Warwick, just a lot of pooch punts, a lot of pop-up punts, it's just to say the Falcons up. Absolutely beautifully. It didn't burn them in the first three possessions, but in the last couple of possessions, it's really hurt the Wizards. So they got to try to clean up that part of their game. They got to get the offense going. The defense, they're hang, they're hang tough. They're hang tough. They're bending and bending. They're not breaking a lot, but a lot still needs to improve for the Wizards offensively in order to get back into this game. Matt DeFusco hasn't got, had to go to the air very much, but when he did, it was check down passes in the slant, which was able to release Chung on that one offensive possession. That got them a touchdown. Then that second time, it was the looping ball over everybody. Marcus Chung had everyone beat in the backfield. It was an absolute dime to Chung. Chung beat both corners absolutely clean. He, he, uh, they didn't know what planet he was on. He beat them both clean and he, he was able to just walk right into the end zone as a beautifully thrown ball and that's just really put the Falcons on top here. The Falcons are looking to get on the win column here in game number two of the season for them their second home game of course they played that injury fund game here last week for West Warwick they're going to try to hold up their undefeated season so far what does West Warwick have to do in the second half to be able to break that Falcons defense down? They need to start changing up the play call. They're always constantly going right up the middle, up the middle, and the Falcons are just blocking up both the A and C dabs. So if you're able to try to bounce it to the outside a little bit try and toss in some screen passes like the Falcons are doing, try to keep that defense off balance, they'll get back into this game. We'll see how the second half turns out. The Falcons leading 13-0 on two touchdowns. One on the ground, one in the air. If they can keep this going through the final 24 minutes, they're going to be able to walk out of the nest tonight with a victory. You've watch, been watching the Halftime Show on Fans Only Sports Network, where you can take a quick commercial break. We'll be right back.
touchdown. And Boyd back out in front, a shot, and a score. Into the zone, to it right on the post side. Oh, yeah. they've got it! The way the opportunity comes back in, center of the ice, open goal, and a score. You know, when they, if they can get the ball into that, when King goes around the horn herself, there's going to be a shot. Coming out is White. The Falcons nil, and another shot on goal!
as we welcome you back for the third quarter of action, the second half here on Fans Only Sports Network, Rhode Island High School football coverage between the Cranston West Falcons and the West Warwick Wizards. Thirteen zero. <laughs> There's no rouge. We're not playing Canadian football. We'll get this one after the uh, after the kickoff. And tackled down at the twenty is number twenty four for the Wizards. And that is. Zachary Rayner. Yeah, Rayner, he he tried to make something really out of nothing and just found us right there to eat them all up. Which is set up first and 10. 5 2 look for the Fountains for the Fountain defense. Handoff through the middle, carried by DeAndre Chase. He's going to pick up about three on the play. And that's something the Fountains have done well all night long. Just really staunch on defense, not giving up a lot of yardage, really really keeping their, keeping the Wizards running backs to the inside part of the field. They're not giving them any part of the outside. And that's something the Wizards have to do on offense if they want to move the ball. And it's going to set a second and seven. Male under center, I formation backfield. Handoff blown up in the backfield by Shackelford. They shove him back five yards to the 15, and he'll be tackled down. DeAndre Chase going nowhere. And that was number 21. They bottled up DeAndre Chase. They bottled up Lewis Rossi. It didn't matter who had the ball. It really doesn't. That just got blown up by bo uh, bo both both guard and Sergeant Medeiros and, and Pangela, and they just did not get their blocks. Th their guys ran right through them like they were paper. Third and 12, the Falcons' defense has been clicking all night long, and they continue to do it again here in the third quarter. Mail going way back, long pass play, looping over, and it's oh, caught and wow. hauled down in traffic by number seven, and that's Richard Medeiros. Wow, that was nearly intercepted. That was one-on-one -on -one coverage. Great pass by Mail. Even better catch right there by Medeiros. So Medeiros hauls that one down. What a throw. Mail, 144 yards and a touchdown last week. Madero's had a 75-yard touchdown, so obviously that's something that he's can be able to do. And Mail and Madero's going to the air once again, try to go here and a big first down pickup for the Wizards. And now they're moving along here. Here's a run in the backfield by DeAndre. Chase for four on the play, second and six. It takes one play to spark an offense and Medeiros's catch that could have easily been intercepted that was what that is what could really start to really click for this Wizards offense and and try to help them get to 2-0 on the year unless the Falcon defense has other plans which they absolutely do the Falcons do have a two touchdown lead at 13 nothing got a touchdown and then an extra point on their fourth possession on the run play, this one's going to go up over top, intercepted! Second interception of the game for the Falcons' defense, and this time it comes into the hands of Hudson Carvalho. Well, Melly tried to find Medeiros again, and Medeiros, you know, Medeiros, he beat, he beat the corner. He beat the corner, but that ball is underthrown, and that, and that set up easily for the Falcons to, with the interception as number 13, Hudson Tavaro, he came down with the interception. Mail's second pick tonight. And that just killed what any momentum the Wizards had going for them offensively. First and 10 from the 
10 for the Falcons, and they're going to be able to hold this 13 nothing lead a little bit longer. They have 90 yards to go, though, to try to extend this lead. This is the worst field position of the night. And we'll see if they can fare better than the 95 yards to go that the Wizards had back in the second quarter. Pitch play on the outside to Chung. Chung tries to bounce through one through two. There's two flags down on the play. And that could be very damaging if it's against the Falcons as they're on the 10-yard line. You saw the Falcons to be half the distance to the goal, so they set them back down to the five. And it's going to be holding against the Falcons. Half the distance. So that'll put them at the five-yard line. Fans Only Sports Network will be right back here in the nest Monday night. Cranston West boys, boys soccer finally getting their season underway against Westerly. And then the Cranston West girls volleyball team also in action Monday night as well against Mount St. Charles. Both those games available here on Fans Only Sports Network. Here's a bottling play that gets pushed through back to the original line of scrimmage and then some to the 17 yard line goes Marcus Chung. Fountains, they sold the play action good. Chung was hit. He was able to find some open room, room up the middle. Really plowed his way through to make it a third and manageable. You go from first and 15. You go from first, you go first and 15 down to a a second and two, much more manageable. No, no, no. Just, just let her fly. Just let her fly. What do you mean? The clock's not running? No, because you were hitting the stop button. Yeah, I'm sorry. This is more clock trouble. <laughs> it's 7.57 left to go here in the third quarter. We'll get that all sorted out for you. It's a third and one for the Falcons. Well, this is where the Wizards need to try to come up good defensively. They, they've had a hard time stopping the Falcons on the run. They've been burned through the air quite, quite a couple times as well. What do the Wizards have up their sleeves to try to slow down this Falcon offense? They they have a third and one. It's third and manageable. They, they had them backed up to one and 15. Keeper and short. He's right there on the line. The referee, the side judge is walking in right at the 20 yard line and the stick is at the 20. That should be oh, first gave down. To, they gave it to him. He was they right at the 20 him. and yeah. the side judge was coming in for the 20. So that they is gave it to him. right there. And it's a first and 10 on the keep there by Matt DeFusco. Maybe they heard me call them out earlier. <laughs> Bad spotting in the second half. Bad spot in the first half, much better than the second half so far. <laughs> now they didn't signal first down at first, so I thought they were going to get a bad spot again. They redeemed themselves. Split backfield man in motion. DeFusco takes the snap here. Bottled up in the backfield and going absolutely nowhere was Noah Ciceron for a second, and somehow Ciceron turns that into a five-yard gain. He just kept his feet moving. That's what you want to do if you're a running back. Just keep your feet moving, drive the pile the best you can, make something out of nothing, and he turned it turned what probably was a two-yard loss into a five-yard gain. Tonight's game is brought to you by PAG Projects for landscaping and snow removal needs. Contact PAG Projects. By Manny's Sports in Cumberland, Rhode Island. Now reopened on Menden Road Wednesday through Saturday. Check out mannysports.com for more information. By Second Time Around Sports in Cranston, Rhode Island. Check out secondtimearoundsports.com for hours and information. And by J.O. Plumbing. J.O. Plumbing. Available at joplumbingri.com where there is pride and integrity in workmanship. Contact J.O. Plumbing 401 996-9440.
play went absolutely no. The, the Wizards, they plucked up all the gaps, and they're able to make the stop in the backfield, trying to find a way to slow down this Falcon offense who's, been, who's scored in each of the last two offensive possessions. Third and eight for the Falcons. Official clock time is 5.13 left to go here in the third quarter. We're a little off. Snap here by DeFusco, man in motion again. DeFusco's got a, under trouble and he's gonna get sacked back and it's gonna be about a five yard loss on the play in a fourth and very long for the Falcons. Yeah, bring out the punt here. The, that, that's probably the best offensive stand that the Wizards have had really all night. No, they've let the Falcons move the ball with these in their first four or five possessions. Here, the Falcons went absolutely nowhere. I mean, they had very bad field position to start at their worst field position of the night and they couldn't do anything with it. So punt for the first time tonight for the Falcons. And this is a high punt, a pooch punt as well. It's gonna take a big bounce. It's gonna be picked up at the 45, back to the 40 and then hauled down right there at the 40 was Lewis Rossi. And that, that, that's a dangerous turn right there when the ball bounces up. Just get it and just go right down to the ground. You, know, you don't try to have to do anything too fancy. You picked up a five yard gain there, but those kind of plays, those lead to fumbles. Now, now I want to see if uh, Malay can read the defense a little bit better when he's passing it. I'm not saying abandon the passing game completely, but he got to start reading the defense a little bit better. You know, he can't be throwing into double, triple coverage constantly. First and 10 for the Wizards from the 40, their best field position of the evening. Mail lost that snap for a second, and Rossi, it's blown up in the backfield. Yeah, uh, uh, the, the second Mail, Mail dropped the ball, that play was dead. The play was dead, the Falcons were all over Rossi. Good job by Rossi to try to scoop it up, but just dive on the ball. Just, you know, you, you lose less yardage that way. Change of venue for us next Friday night. We'll be at Connolly Stadium in Providence, Rhode Island. The Central Knights in action. Their first home game of the season. Taking on the Woonsocket Villanovans. You can catch all that action right here on Fans Only Sports Network. 6 p.m. kickoff time from Connolly Stadium. Mail will check down pass in the middle. That one is moved through. And it's going to be a first down on the play. And it's number 33, Sean Schultz. See what the Wizards can do here. They're trying to move the ball, trying to keep their offense on there, trying to give their defense a little bit of rest after a great defensive stand. But can the Falcons' bend, don't break defense mentality really come through here? They're going to have to hold firm here with about three minutes left to go officially in the third quarter, leading 13-0 over the Wizards. Mail, a little pitch out play. Trying to get it through is DeAndre Chase. Chase spinning and to the sticks he goes and he will pick up a first down. DeAndre Chase, a 12 yard run on the play. DeAndre Chase, he could have been tackled in the backfield but failure to wrap up in the, in the backfield gives Chase an opportunity to make a first down play. What turned into what could have been a five, six yard loss turned into a 12 yard gain. 2.49 officially left on the game clock. We're getting there. Week one in earnest on the season. We're really trying to work out preseason jinx. And this one, Rossi is bottled up in the backfield and sacked down. A two-yard loss on the play. It's going to set second and 12. Well, this is where the bend don't break mentality for the Falcons has to kick in here. They've been staunch on defense all night long, not giving the Wizards much room to really do much of anything. Now, now it's crunch time. You're in the red zone. They're driving the ball, the best drive of the night. Can you come up with a big play on defense to prevent them from getting into the end zone? Second and 12. Rossi goes in motion. 
Virtually empty backfield. I formation now behind Mel. Time out called, or did they get called for the delay of game? False start on the offense. Killer. So that's going to set them back five yards, and it's going to end up going to put them second and about 17. Those kind of penalties just absolutely lose your mind as a coach. You know what the snap count is, break in the huddle, and you jump. I mean, I'm guilty of it myself, but... <laughs> 140 left to go here in the third. Mail sends one outside, tripped up and coming down at the 20 yard line was Sean Schultz. Number 33, Sean Schultz with the reception. Schultz had to reach for that one a little bit. I mean, look, good safe throws right now by Mail. I think he's a little afraid to throw it over the middle and deep. It's going to set a third down and 12. And we have one minute and 13 seconds remaining. With a minute. And change left to go here in the third. Well, the Falcons' defense has stood tall throughout the night. The Falcons' offense was able to click in the first half, and the Falcons are going to have 12 minutes of clock time left to go and carry a 13 nothing lead here, barring any odd moments of play at the end, as they're going to bottle him up here back at the line of scrimmage. So it's going to be fourth and 12. You know the ways you have to go for it. Going absolutely nowhere there. Look to be James Brennan. Might have been there on the play. Feel the Wizards, you have to go for it here. You, I mean, yeah, you want points and a timeout called by by the Wizards to give to draw something up. Uh, James Branch, number eight. Oh, man, as we've seen on the bottom of our screen, the Red Sox wildcard hopes are still alive and well. And trying to. I mean, absolutely wild game. And welcome back, Hunter Renfro. What a play. Oh, what a dart. What a play from center field the other night to end the game as well, too. The, the I mean, almost all the way to third base on the oh, air. Beautiful. Little one, uh, little one hop there. But Well, there, there's a team on the Red Sox. A little score, scoreboard update here, if you don't mind. The Orioles are beating the Blue Jays 3 0 in the top of the fourth. The Yankees have a 2 1 lead over the Mets in the bottom of the third. Red Sox just underway in Chicago. The A's first pitch for them at 9 40 against the Texas Rangers. And the Mariners first pitch at 10 10 against the Arizona Diamondbacks. We'll see if the Red Sox can continue to keep things going. Just lost Chris Sale on to, to the COVID IL. I feel like everybody's gone on the go by hell lately. Tenth member of the Red Sox oh, to go on there. Another busted play. <laughs> they tried to make a field goal attempt there and went empty. well wide. Empty. Completely empty. That is the definition of a wasted possession right there. You're moving the ball well. And you get stopped in the red zone. That that right there is also the definition of a bend, don't break mentality by the Falcon defense. So it's going to be first and 10 Falcons with 15 seconds left to go in the third quarter. Of course, they'll carry this play forward through into the fourth quarter and start the final 12 minutes of play and certainly try to put one more on the board. A three-score lead, a three -score lead in the enough. fourth quarter should be enough to get them through is this one is a handoff up the middle and still trying to go and they're just going to whistle that play dead and let the quarter drain out and that will run the clock to the end and we will get the horn sounding and that will be the end of the third quarter of action so we're going to take a quick break we'll be right back with fourth quarter action you're watching rhode island high school football on fans only sports network Cut back the other way to the five did he get in? Lynch sets back. Powers through. First down and then some. He's going to go all the way down. 20. 10 to the races. Touchdown. And Borth back out in front. A shot and a score. Into the zone. Right on the post side. Oh, they've got it. The 
away the opportunity. Comes back in, center of the ice, open goal, and they score. You know, when they, if they can get the ball into that, when King goes around the horn herself. Back for the fourth quarter of action, Matt Jellis alongside Nick LeBlanc right here on Fans Only Sports Network. The Cranston West Falcons leading 13-0 over the West Warwick Wizards. And it's going to be a second down, or is it a first? Should be second down, yeah. Should be second down and 10. I don't know where the chains are. Should be second down and 10 from the 15. DeFusco. Big handoff there, rumbling through all of the line with Dimitri LeBlanc. That will be a first down. As LeBlanc first. is going to pick up about 20 on the play. And, and right now for the Falcons, try, try to score one more time, but hold the ball. Hold possession. You're up two scores. You're up in the fourth quarter. Keep the ball going. Keep, d take your time on this. Take, you are in absolutely zero rush. Yeah, Falcons controlling their own destiny here with the offensive side of the ball. And it's been the running game tonight of Chung and LeBlanc, but it's also been Chung and LeBlanc in the air as well, too, yeah. when DeFusco decided to air it out towards the end of the second quarter. There's DeFusco again. This one's going to be LeBlanc one more time. He's going to get through and pick up about six on the play. It's going to set down a second and four. And, and one thing that's been real successful for the Falcons tonight between both Chung and LeBlanc, they keep their legs moving. They're driving the ball. That's what you want to do if you're a running back. Keep your legs moving. Move the pile. And really, if you keep your legs moving, good things tend to happen. It is the first Friday Night Lights in earnest before the NFL season begins in earnest. Of course, last night, the opening game of the NFL season. What a game it was. Tampa Bay Buccaneers, Dallas Cowboys in Tampa Bay. Tampa Bay, of course, raising that championship banner that was helped by Rob Gronkowski and Tom hey. Brady and a few other Patriots per that went south to retire. Uh, uh, parentheses on banner. That's not a banner. That's, <laughs> a li that, that's literally just slapping the the numbers 2020 along with the logo on like a, a well. But the Patriots with mac and cheese time <laughs> will open up the season against the Miami Dolphins who may very well be led by Tuatalia Bowen. and yep. we're going to have an Alabama quarterback battle. Yep, uh, yep, yep. battle the Bama quarterbacks. Two and Mac. There are three Alabama quarterbacks as QB1 on the depth chart yep. in the NFL this season. Jalen Hurts of Philadelphia. Snap here by DeFusco. Another run. This is LeBlanc up through the ball, comes out. He's down on contact. Yep. No question there, and yeah, it's hit. first down. Noah Ciceron battles that one through. Yeah, hit, yeah, his butt hit the hit the ground before the ball after the ball popped out. Yeah, absolutely no question. You could hear the yeah. whistle before the ball popped out on that one. Yeah, 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 ground. Yeah, yeah, here's the ground. Butt hit the ground first, and then the ball popped out. <laughs> and as we were talking about post game, they're directly on the bottom of the center of your screen. In the red jacket with the long hair and the KT tape on her leg is Madison Alves. And that is what we saw last night, that knock to her knee that she took during the second half of the soccer game against Barrington and why she is not dressed and kicking for the Falcons this, uh, this evening is because of that injury that she sustained last night. And they're just taking it precautionary and resting her, of course, very difficult season that she deals with both going back and forth between soccer and football got a falcon down on the field I mean, falcons player is down on the field so it's a timeout with 10 9 
left to go here in the fourth quarter. Falcons leading 13 nothing. We'll take a quick break and be right back. You're watching Rhode Island High School Football on Fans Only Sports Network. There's going to be a shot. Coming out is white. The Falcons, no, no shot on goal. Sets back. Powers through. First down and then some. He's going to go all the way down. 20. 10 to the races. Touchdown. And Borth back out in front. A shot and a score. Into the zone. Just right on the post side. <laughs> As the injured Falcons player has been helped off the field, and that's going to set us up. 10 09 left to go here in the fourth Falcons leading 13 nothing and it's a third and eight hard, hard to see the red number with the uh, with the uh, dark dark gray jersey really hard to see the number ball spotted at the 39 yard line And <laughs> Ciceron got lit up right yeah. at the forty yard line. Yeah, he he tried to blow right through the the A gap right right there, but the linebackers were ready to meet him, and he just got absolutely plopped to the ground. And that's going to be a fourth and very long. Third, I don't know what the down. I third honestly down. don't know what the chains are doing because they they they've. It's third and ten. <laughs> third and ten. So third and ten. We're going to get that all sorted out. There we go. DeFusco in the flat here. Gets it off to Marcus Chung. Chung dances through. Picks up about two on the play. And then is hauled down. And now we have reached fourth down. Well, well that's a disappointing possession for the Falcons. There, you, you have plenty of time to try to move the ball. Really take your time. And now you have the Wizards the ball back with the Wizards now with a little bit of sense saying, hey, we can still try to come back here and score 14 unanswered points. They, they, all they need is 14 because the Falcons, they missed an extra point earlier in the night. But the clock is running, and that is in the favor of the Falcons and their defense right now. The Falcons are going to punt, and now they're actually going to step back for a second. So the Falcons came out in punt formation it, it, and actually lined up and then now have stepped back. You're inside your own 45-yard line. Just just punt, the, just punt the ball away. Try to pin them inside their own 35. And they're going to have to call timeout. Out. So personnel issues abound for the Falcons as they call timeout with 7.57 left to play here in the fourth. You're inside your own 45-yard line. All you gotta do is just pin them down inside their own 35, 30 yard line. It, it, uh, for, for, to, to me, it's not that hard of a decision. It, you, you don't want to play with fire when you're up 13. Yeah, 13 is a good lead, but it's not a safe lead. Don't play with fire, play it safe, pin them deep in their own territory, make them go the length of the field. Tonight's game is brought to you by Manny Sports, 1725 Menden Road. In Cumberland, Rhode Island, now open Wednesday through Saturday by Second Time Around Sports. On in Cranston, Rhode Island, check out SecondTimeAroundSports.com for more information. By RR Elite Recruits, if you're looking to play at the next level, contact www.rreliterecruits.com. By Jo Plumbing, Rhode Island, septic, drain cleaning, and sewer. Jo Plumbing, where there is pride and integrity in workmanship. Four zero one nine nine six. Nine four four zero. Here is a punt play that goes all the way down to the thirty-five. Takes a big Falcons bounce and will be tapped down at the twenty-two yard line. And Nick LeBlanc is just going. I think I called it. It, it. it wasn't that hard of a decision. It really wasn't, if you think about it. You, you pin them inside. You pin them inside their own thirty. Good. You're making them go. 
70 plus yards to get to the end zone. So Jack Major makes a booming punt there and it is pinned down at the 23 yard line is where they officially spot the ball. I just don't get why you had to burn a timeout to make that decision. It's gonna it, be it's not rocket science. Right, and it's gonna be first and ten for the Wizards as they try to get something going here in the final seven and a half left to go. Mail. Pass out in the flat here. Holding for it is Medeiros. Medeiros has a run here to the 30, to the 25. Medeiros is going to go to the house. Touchdown, Wizards. He nearly dropped that ball, but good, good catch by him and just a great run to really just outrun the defenders there. A little, a little bit of a breakdown in coverage by the Falcons when there are very few slip-ups. And it is not 13-12, it is 13-6. Uh, we apologize for that. I, I didn't know we are playing rugby. <laughs> <laughs> it's a try. There we go. And the Wizards are going to line up here for the extra point. Now you got a response if you're the foul. Now you got to get the ball moving again on offense. It's going to be Sean Correa here. Low kick, but over the crossbar, it's good. Correa puts the one on the board. 13-7 with seven and a half left to go. Well, well, that's a, that was a good play for the Wizards. Gives them some momentum, especially on defense. Now, the Falcons, now you the clock's still on your side. You're still ahead. But now you got to put together a strong rebuttal. you got to put down a nice touchdown drive here to really try to cement this game away. Because you've allowed the Wizards to stay in this game, now you're allowing them to get back into the game. West Warwick Wizards, part of the co-op with Exeter West Greenwich during ice hockey season, playing out of the West Warwick Civic Center. A number of games we covered for them last year and looking towards hockey season coming back very soon in Rhode Island at a full hockey season this year as well, too. I might as well get a, a bed ready down at Alderaan Arena and Moonsoft it. <laughs> I'll you, be there a while. You lived in Adelaide Arena for like two months last year because uh, of all the games that we had. Here's an onside kick trying to go a little Sean Payton oh, style, wow. but it fails as it's scooped ne up by the up man. Nearly successful. Nearly successful. Uh, yeah, yeah, me, 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 and uh, Carlson, we we almost we lived there. I should set up a bed over there. <laughs> I don't think they'll let me. I'm like five minutes down the road. You guys can just come right. In. It's not bad. It's not a bad ride for me though. It's it, it's not. You know, I mean, Rhode Island's the size of a thumbnail. You can get top of the bottom of the state in 45 minutes. Yeah. It's like oh well. I mean, I mean, at least me. we're not Delaware. You know, no. that's even smaller. I, I mean, it takes. I mean, from where I am in Mass and Clinton, it takes me about an hour to there. But I'm only on the highway for about. 20 minutes and I just drive through Bellingham. Yeah, not a bad drive no. at all. Oh, no. A nice and easy drive. Very easy. First and 10 here for the Falcons. 725 left to go here in the fourth. Man in motion. There was Chung takes the handoff, turns up, and a big pickup play from Marcus Chung. And he gets across the sticks to the 44-yard line in a first down. And that's something the Falcons need to do more of. Chung, he finally found an open hole up the middle, up the A-gap, and he took it, and he ran with it, got it past the six, and the Falcons need many, much more plays of that. they got to try to salt this game away, but you got to score. You have to score. Mentioned Marcus Chung is one of the players to watch during pregame show, and he has been a player to watch in the game today. First and 10 for the Falcons from the 44. Man in motion again goes Chung. Snap off here. Handed off by DeFusco in the backfield and wrapped up right away for a loss of two on the play. Wizards read that like a book. And Ciceron had nowhere to be able to go. It, it, it got blown up right up the middle. They, they blitzed right up both ADAPs. Ciceron had zero shot, zero chance to try to make anything on that. 
You can't go backwards. You have to go forward. Don't give the Wizards a chance. Second and 12. Snap to DeFusco. Chung's going to try to escape out of the backfield. Houdini move, and he gets out of bounds at the 35-yard line and then gets taken down hard on the track and got to be very careful with that McAdam track that they have there, but everybody comes back out of it. It's going to be third and two or three as the ball's spot at the 37-yard line, and Marcus Chung, two big runs for the Falcons' offense. And what I liked what Chung did there, he didn't settle for the inside. He bounced it right out to the outside. The sideline's your friend. Use the sideline to your advantage. Play action fake to Chung. Goes to Ciceron up the middle. Ciceron's going to pick up easily the three, and then some Noah Ciceron. Good night. Touchdown, Falcons. Ciceron, he found the hole right at the a gap. He did a little houdini light moves. Did a little juke move, and then he was off to the races. Huge, huge touchdown here for the Falcons. Now, you, you either got to take the extra point or go over two to go up, to go up, go, go back up 13 or go up 14. Force the Wizards to go down the length of the field and uh, try to tie this one up. Well, now here we go. The Falcons have put six on the board and equaled their total number of points from last week's game at 19 but they now have the huge lead this time at 19-7 and we'll see what they can do here on the extra point attempt it is up and it is good so 20 to 7 for the falcons with 5 54 left to go here in the fourth quarter that was a huge touchdown great run by Susan. that was a fantastic run he didn't settle he found the he found the C gap actually it wasn't the A gap. He found the C gap, did a little couple juke moves, and he was off to the races. And he he was able to outrun everyone. That is a statement drive right there. Now on defense, you can't let the same thing happen. What happened last drive? One play touchdown, but the clock's still on your side. You you now got a 13 point advantage. Pressure back on the Wizards. Pressure's on you la, on the on offense. You capitalized on it, purchase back on the Wizards. And they've got it back to a two-score differential now as they had given up that touchdown that pulled it back to a one-score. But now you're back up to two scores, and we're talking about two scores as in two touchdowns that the uh, Wizards are going to be able to have to try to get. Yeah, you got to go the length of the field, get another seven, and then do what you did last time, but try to execute a little bit better. The onside kick to get that extra position, set yourself up in beautiful field position right around midfield this one's gonna bounce over the second tier player and they get lit up in the backfield hard yikes what a hit you want to talk about hard knocks that was right there that is the definition my friends of a hard knock like squishing a bug what what a what a hit that was Braden Stetson, the, the junior, number 21 for the Cranston West Falcons, who just absolutely lit up the second-tier player for the Wizards. That I'm not down on the field. It might have broken my back. <laughs> I think that would have broken every bone in my body. That was lethal. First and 10, five and change. To go here, Mile steps back, looking. He's under pressure hard. That one's going to go wide of his receiver and also wide of the outstretched arms there of Hudson Carvalho. Carvalho, good coverage there. He read that ball beautifully. It was just, he, had, he had no chance to catch it. Again, another bad throw, but this this time it, saved, it harmlessly fell to the turf as he overthrew it. But but his two interceptions though. Wasn't because of overthrows, underthrows. You are correct on that. Both of them were short balls that the uh, cornerbacks were able to come around and take the pick. 527 left to go. Second and 10. Back in the shotgun here is Mile. 
Well, steps back. He's going to be caught again. This one's going to go short to DeAndre Chase. Chase is going to try to turn this into a huge run. DeAndre Chase rumbling and bumbling to midfield. DeAndre Chase. First and 10 for the Wizards at the 49-yard line. Chase, Chase just did what LeBlanc and Chung have been doing all night. Kept his feet moving. He was able to put on. He, he carried about three fountain defenders on him to midfield. Mile steps back again. Will shuffle past there and does not reach his intended receiver. And so it's going to set up second and 10. And then it was another short throw, but. His, his guy was able to get a hand on it, and that's what you want. So I did off target in a short throw, but your guy was there to get a hand on it first for a fountain defender was able to get a hand on it. As we mentioned earlier on the broadcast, a little change of venue for us next week will be in Providence, Rhode Island at Connolly Stadium. 6 p.m. kickoff between the Central Golden Knights and the Woonsocket Villanovans. And all you can catch all the action right here on Fans Only Sports Network. Mile. Bothered in the backfield. Again, tipped ball coming down. Is it intercepted? They're going to say incomplete. It hit oh. the ground right there with his paws on it. Number 25. Not, not listed. It, it, it was the right call by the fish. So the ball did hit the ground for. It was a great attempt, great attempt. Nearly, nearly picked off, and the ball is batted up in the air for a little while. I stayed in the air for about two, three seconds. So the Wizards get out of that one scot free, and it sets up now a third and ten. Mile has to throw this one a mile down the way. That one pops up, and that goes incomplete. Double coverage again. Had still had a couple of guys in the area, and that just and that barely fell harmlessly to, to the turf. Mail's last two pass attempts, or really last three pass attempts, if you want to think about it. A little a little short on the throws, but two of them nearly intercepted to ice this game away. It, Fountains, the Fountains get a turnover here, either turnover down so they picked it off or did a fumble recovery, iced. Fourth down and 10 for 41 left to go in the fourth quarter. Do or die time for the Wizards, can you convert? Mile with one in the backfield. Two out wide to the left, two out wide to the right. Takes it, looking for the bubble screen. Can't go, trouble. Flag down in the backfield. It's gonna go short and we'll see what the flag is. Flag down at midfield, came down in the backfield. It's going to be holding against West Warwick. Penalty is declined, and that's going to be a turnover on downs. Uh, the flag was declined. Uh, 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 I don't know what to say. It was a DeAndre Chase. He real he got you to midfield to try to spark global momentum, and you stalled. So 4.31 left to go here in the fourth. A turnover on downs is going to bring first and 10 for the Falcons. And with a two-touchdown lead, opportunity here that the Falcons can just be able to just run the see clock. this one out. And there's an injured player down on the field out of our camera view. And we're going to keep that one out of our camera view as we're going to take a quick commercial break. We'll be right back. You're watching Rhode Island High School Football on Fans Only Sports Network. First and 10, 4.31 left to go here in the fourth snap taken 
in the backfield by Ciceron, and he's going to pick up about three on the play, and it's going to set second in about seven. Ciceron, he had a huge touchdown run in the last drive. He, he's going to be a little key here and uh, just try to drain out this game. And apologies, that was actually Marcus Chung, number one, with the carry there. Ran into a pile of Wizards defenders as he was turning and couldn't get a full look at the number. Snap handed off here. This time it is Ciceron and he barrels up through the midfield and gets it to a manageable third and five. Just keep the clock moving. He did the first down here. This game's over. This game, if, if you get stopped on third and fourth down, you breathe a little bit of new life into the Wizards, but they got to convert on those passes. Ticking down towards three minutes left to go in a very crucial third and five here for the Falcons offense. See what Matt DeFusco can do under center eye formation in the backfield. Empty to the left, two to the right. DeFusco hands off there. Ciceron battles through. He got to the 40. Is it good enough? They might mark him short. They're going to mark him a half a yard shy of the first down. Well, this is a well, this is a crucial, crucial fourth down. I mean, it's a fourth that ma extremely manageable. But if you're the Wizards, you got to come up staunch on defense and just give yourself a glimmer of hope. Fountains get this first down. This game is iced. That is fourth and a nose of a football with 225 left to go here in the game. About, about fourth and a foot. I formation backfield again. Empty to the left, two to the right. Keep there by DeFusco. He's going to go for about seven or eight. Matt DeFusco. Puts That's it on it. his back and takes the Falcons home. <laughs> takes the Falcons home and takes them to their first victory of the season. Clark officially stopped with 2.03, and now they've spotted the ball in the chains, and so the clock continues to go ahead and run. But Matt DeFusco on the keep just put it right on his back. And the Falcons can go ahead and walk this one out. Oh, yeah, just just kill this clock. It, 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 what, great game, great win by here on the, by the Falcons here tonight. They were solid in all, in, on both phases of the game, both offense and defense. Oh, the Falcons. Will just continue to try to Scratch time off the clock here. Ciceron takes a little run up the middle. It's going to be second and eight. It was a great win by the Falcons. They had a good, they, they had a solid running attack, but they also mixed in a lot of good passes in there too. But the key, key play was that, was a, the Sasko to Chung pass in the, in the second quarter. That's what really put this game away. Falcons will go on the road next week at Shea before they return home here on September 24th against North Kingstown. We'll have that North Kingstown game right here on Fans Only Sports Network. For West Warwick. Falcons going to need it here to... Uh, officially put an end to this game and march their way to their first victory of the season. West Warwick will head home to face Tolman next week. That game at 6.30. But the Cranston West Falcons come out of this one with a commanding 20-7 victory over the West Warwick Wizards. We're going to take a quick commercial break. We'll be right back to wrap this one up. You're watching... Fans Only Sports Network, Rhode Island High School football coverage.
welcome you back one more time inside the broadcast booth. A final score here from Cranston West High School, 20 to 13. The Cranston West Falcons, sorry, actually, that should be 20 to 7. <laughs> Cranston West Falcons over the West Warwick Wizards, and it has been absolutely a game dominated on the ground by Marcus Chung. Really got it going in the first quarter, and then it was turned around, and it became Noah Ciceron. It became kind of, you know, Matt Tafusco with a couple of quarterback sneaks, whoever you really wanted to handle the ball to. Yeah, it didn't matter who handled the football tonight for the Falcons. Every, all of them moved the chains. They got first downs. It, it was just a great all-around game by the Falcons. They had a good mix of running passes. It, it was just an all-around great game. On defense, they were stunned. They only, they only broke one time on a defensive lapse on that one pass play on that. Fountain defense was absolutely solid tonight. Yeah, for the Cranston West Falcons, they pick up their first victory of the season. They'll be headed on the road to Shea next week before they come back here against North Kingstown for us at Fans Only Sports Network. We'll be at Connolly Stadium in Providence, Rhode Island next week. The Central Golden Knights take on the Woonsock of Villanovans Friday night, 6 p.m. Eastern kickoff time right here on Fans Only Sports Network. For our cameraman, Tyler Pereira, producer Mason Belcher, Nick Great to share a booth with you once again. I'm sure we'll do this plenty more times over the season. We're just getting started. Uh, I, hey, I always don't mind making the drive. For our president and CEO, Ron Robert, I'm Matt Jealous. Thank you so much for tuning in. We'll see you next week.